G'day everyone, the world is an interesting and beautiful place. There's so much variety. There are different environments, different climate zones, different kinds of weather, and even within a location, the kinds of weather, the temperature, the amount of light in a day changes throughout the year. We have different seasons, and you might be surprised to learn that without those seasons, there's a good chance that you wouldn't exist. In this video, we're going to take a look at first what causes seasons and how seasons in different places work, and then we'll be looking at some speculations about what would happen if we didn't have those seasons. But first, why do we have seasons? To answer that, let's take a look at the Earth. We live on a globe. It's not perfectly spherical, but it's pretty close. In a year, or 365 and a bit days, the Earth orbits or travels around the Sun, a day being when Earth completes one rotation. But where do the seasons come from? You'll notice that if you ever look at a model of the Earth like this one, the axis has a tilt. 23.5 degrees from the plane of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. The tilt was caused by a large object colliding with young Earth, knocking it so hard that it gave us a tilt. It also hit us hard enough that it, it caused a huge amount of young Earth to be thrown into space, and that has since gathered together to form our moon. We've had a tilt ever since. The direction of the tilt doesn't really shift, meaning that it faces the same way the entire orbit of the Sun. That means that at different times, different parts of the Earth are getting more or less sunlight. Typically, we consider there to be four seasons, but this is a generalization. There are many First Nations cultures around the world who consider there to be more seasons specific to a particular region. Just as an example, and I'm not a First Nations person, and I'm therefore unable to teach Indigenous culture, but I am living on Wurundjeri country, where the traditional custodians who have been here for 60,000 years consider there to be seven seasons, all categorised by their own unique weather and different markers with the plants and animals of this place. I just want to keep that in mind as we go forward. Depending on where the Earth is in its orbit, each part of the Earth will receive different amounts of sunlight. When the South Pole is facing towards the Sun, it's summer in the Southern Hemisphere. And at the same time, the North Pole will be facing away from the Sun, and it's then winter in the Northern Hemisphere. More sunlight means more heat energy, which is why summer is warmer than winter. There are times during the middle of each hemisphere's summer where the sun won't set at the poles because of how it's facing the sun. And then there are times during the middle of winter at the poles where the sun won't rise. Check out this time lapse of a day during the summer in Antarctica. The sun might dip below the horizon, briefly giving a little bit of twilight, but it doesn't get dark. That's pretty cool. We need to talk about the equator, the place where the two hemispheres meet. It's right here in the middle of the Earth's surface, and the seasons work quite differently there. Along the equator, the amount of sunlight doesn't really change. There's always 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night, and this means that the temperature is pretty stable year-round. In the tropics or the region just north or south of the equator, there are two kinds of seasons. There's wet season and dry season. When it's summer in the southern hemisphere, in the Tropic of Capricorn, just south of the equator, it's getting a bit more sun. More sun means more heat, water evaporates faster, and this causes a lot more rain. This tropical band of rain will then get passed to the northern hemisphere when the sun is facing the Tropic of Cancer, north of the equator, and it will cause a wet season. And if there's a wet season in the Tropic of Cancer, there'll be a dry season in the Tropic of Capricorn. And boy, can it rain during a wet season. Right in the middle of the tropical region is the equator itself. And it kind of gets four seasons, a wet season, a dry season, another wet season, and another dry season. Wait, before we move on, more sunlight means more heat. Wouldn't that mean that the poles should be the hottest places on Earth during the summer because the sun doesn't set? Well, no. Yes, there is more light, but because the Earth is a globe, there are lots of angles at play. For this, I'm going to need to turn off the lights. That's better. I have the sun here, and it's shining from where the sun is, which is well, a fair distance from Earth. Uh, it's shining towards the side of it. It's not shining above and it's not shining below. It's coming from the side. It's 
shining pretty directly onto the areas around the tropics and in the summer, these temperate zones like where Australia is. We can even swivel it around so that you can see Australia there. I'm gonna keep this light about this distance away and see what happens when we move it around the Earth in different spots. At the moment, it's shining pretty directly onto the tropical region and the temperate regions, this, oh, such as Australia there, as though we were in Australia's summer. It's focusing its light in a fairly small area, so the heat is fairly intense. Watch what happens though if we move it down towards the poles. The amount of light is really stretching out. No longer do we have this small spot, we have a much larger spot. So we've got a small spot where it's shining directly onto the warmer areas of the country of the planet, so the equator and the temperate regions during the summer. But as we get closer to the poles, the amount of light is really getting stretched out. It's covering a much, much larger distance. Therefore, the energy from the heat and the light is getting dispersed a lot further. The same amount of light is getting dispersed. The same amount of energy is getting spread over a much greater area, which means that the heat energy that's going you know, onto the land is much less intense at the poles than it would be around the equator or even these temperate regions of Earth, which is why we can have day, summer days which last for months without it heating up like we are in the centre of Australia. There you go. So the Earth's tilt gives us our seasons, but what if it didn't? What if Earth didn't have a tilt and therefore the seasons didn't exist? If we were more upright and each region on Earth had consistent conditions all year round, what would happen? Well, it wouldn't be good. The equator would probably remain reasonably similar, though without the wobble of the tropical rain band, it would likely just be a long wet season, but just along the equator. And that would be a lot of water. Conditions would likely be similar to the equator's current wet seasons. Hot, very wet, very humid. As you traveled further north and further south, the further you got from the equator, the colder it would get. If you traveled too far, it would essentially become like a perpetual winter. Much of Earth's surface would become too cold for humans to live in. Not just because it would be hard for us to warm ourselves, but because much of the food that we eat requires seasons in order to grow and for the crops to reproduce. Humans would therefore be limited to the tropical regions. Much of Europe and North America, South America, Africa and Australia would become uninhabitable. It would be very, very wet on the equator, but dry as you got towards the edge of the tropics. This wouldn't be great for us. Anthropologists believe that this seasonless earth would not be able to support big societies of humans, and humans would remain in small clusters in the tropical regions of earth and would find it difficult to advance. There are a number of factors that led to the civilizations that we have today. One of those is the agricultural revolution. Humans began farming and being able to produce much more than any individual would ever need, so greater numbers of people could live in a place. And this allowed people to come together and develop technology, science, medicine, ideas. Without seasons, we wouldn't be able to grow many of the crops that have played a fundamental role in the development of humanity. Wheat wouldn't exist, which has been a staple in the diets of many billions of people over the last several thousands of years. Crops like rice would be limited only to where there is enough water, so areas around the equator might be able to produce it, but not enough to support 8 billion or more humans. The regions of Earth that support plant life would be limited to areas where it's warm enough. Photosynthesis occurs less and less in plants as temperatures get below 10 degrees Celsius. Deciduous plants on Earth, for the most part, drop their leaves during winter and will grow them in summer. They have a winter dormancy, but without a summer, they can't survive. They won't be able to grow, photosynthesize, reproduce, and so we just wouldn't have these deciduous plants anymore. Life on Earth would look very different. It's true that over billions of years, life would likely evolve differently without seasons. We wouldn't have deciduous crops, like many of the fruit trees that we currently have, but 
other plants would likely take their place. But due to the reduced amount of land that could support plant life because it would be too cold, let alone enough plants to support many, many humans, life for humanity would look very different. Living in small clusters around the tropics would mean that we, well, couldn't really advance beyond that. The agricultural revolution would likely not have happened, meaning that things like the industrial revolution, which required huge population densities to trigger the advancement of science and technology, it just wouldn't have occurred. None of the kinds of modern technologies we have today would have come to be, and you, would likely not exist, not least because the population of humans on Earth would be tiny compared to today. But with all humans living in tropical regions, many parasites and pathogens that thrive in hot, humid conditions would be a huge problem for a society that never develops medicine. <laughs> Child mortality would be high and life expectancy would be low and life would be very different. But fortunately, we do have seasons. I love how perfectly calibrated Earth is to support human life. It's been in the works a long time and it's a delicate balance. So many systems are so closely intertwined on our planet that changing one element of them like the seasons would cause so many things to just come crumbling down. Climate is important and due to the seasons, humanity has been able to progress to the point where you are able to watch this video from wherever you are on Earth and I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> the climate is amazing. It's so perfect for supporting us. We really ought to do our best not to break it because that would cause serious, serious problems. Thank you for watching this video. I recently hit 1000 subscribers and I am so grateful. Thank you to all my friends who shared my channel to help me reach more people. And thank you for joining me. I think that the world and the universe is full of amazing things and it's great to be curious and to ask questions and to share what we find about those things. And that's what I'm doing here on this YouTube channel. So thank you for helping me get to this milestone. I've met the requirements now to get monetized so that I can now earn a little bit of money off of these videos, which is great because it means I can do things for the videos. I like spending money on them. For today's video, I purchased this globe specifically for today. So having a little stream of income is going to just help me to do more things with this channel. And I just want to thank you for being here and helping that happen. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching. I'm just so grateful. I'd love to know what you thought of this video in the comments below. And I'd also love to hear what you think I should cover in the future. I actually wrote and filmed this video quite quickly because I had a bit of an influx of subscribers. I wanted to make and put out a more typical video for me on this channel instead of the one I had scheduled. So next time, join me as I do an explainer on how government in Australia works. Until then, thanks for watching. Take care, stay curious, and I'll see you next time. That's a look. <laughs> oh, that's too bright. Oh gosh.